At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. At Staples Business Advantage, we help you select from 2,000 break room products, so you can be sure there's something for everyone. Yum. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Shares for beginners. And the copper gold ratio has a very, very strong correlation with the 10 year yield. And if you graph it over the past 30 years, you say, that's odd. That's so correlated, that's amazing. So, what you see now is that the 10 year yield is wavering and it's basically going down again, which is remarkable because we are in a highly inflationary environment. This highly inflationary environment usually needs bond yields to go up to stop inflation from running wild. But now the market says they won't raise that high. G'day and welcome back to Shares for Beginners. I'm Phil Muscatello. And today, I'm happy to welcome back to the chair, Peter Backer from Unhedged. G'day, Peter. How's it going? It's going really well. How are you, Phil? Good. <laughs> well, that wasn't the way you said it when you first walked in. <laughs> and we've both been whinging to each other. But <laughs> So, um, yeah, we talked, I think, was in um, January, February this year. Yeah, about, the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah correct. Unhedged. Unhedged, which um, is an algorithmic trading pl- platform. So just remind listeners again what this is, because it sounds frightening and scary and it's kind of like we you know we're always hearing that the algorithms are running the market so you know there's it's almost like there's conspiracy theories about yeah, it but, yeah. Um, the tin head <laughs> yeah, yeah, the tin yeah I, can, I can put my tin hat on and then tell you what we're doing <laughs> um no so algorithmic investing is basically a type of investing what is between passive and active so yes we take positions in the market but we are guarding those positions every second and the algorithms they work what they or what they call on probability so they estimate the probability that there's a a, a market route or they estimate the probability that a company has bad numbers and then it will decide to go out or go in it's basically more flexible the biggest difference between let's call them out, Spaceship, Stockspots, Rays, and us, is that those companies have static portfolios. So they, they work with like five to seven ETFs. And it's a great way of investing, right? So don't get me wrong. But it's less flexible. So it's it does always the same in the same market. So what we're doing, we have a universe, what they, what we call it, of the Russell 3000, which is the 3000 biggest companies in the US. And, and this is, and it's all US? It's all US based. Markets that you're trading uh, in. At the moment it's only, only US based, but later we, we will go into Australia and London and other, uh, other areas. Now it's only US based. So we take the Russell 3000 as our universe, and then we find the best opportunities based on the type of algorithm. So we have one algorithm that looks at momentum, and then it looks for where the bottom, it predicts where the bottom of the of, of, of the curve is, and then it buys in and it waits until it goes up. Another algorithm that we are running is uh, about metals. So it looks at the industrial metals, so copper and uh, iron and, uh, you know, things we use, versus the more hedging metals, so uh, gold Mm -hmm. and silver and platinum. And what we then do is look at the relative performance and the relative uh, trajectory, and then we decide whether it's more a bull or a bear market, and we position ourselves accordingly. And then the last one we have live now is is a really interesting if you're a mathematician, <laughs> for me it's interesting. Yeah. Um, an interesting model, it's, it's basically the, a model which we call a hierarchical risk parity. Sorry, so, repeat that again? Hi- hierarchical? Hierarchical. <laughs> hierarchical. Uh, hierarchical. Yeah. Yeah. Risk parity. So what it basically does, it looks at all the sectors in the US and then it determines how much risk a sector has 
and then it basically underweights or overweights sector. So it's been amazing that this algorithm has been live from January this year to now, and it actually has done a plus two percent, mm. which is remarkable because the U.S. market is down. What is still twelve, thirteen percent? Yeah, and it had dropped down to what twenty something. Yeah, percent. twenty-three. Yeah. Or it depends on which which index. Yeah, you yeah. I mean the the Nasdaq went down almost to thirty, right? So it's mm. it's painful, and and so this is the biggest difference between static investing and more dynamic. What we're doing is that our primary goal is not to lose too much money. Mm. And the absolute passive investors, they say, I don't care how much I lose, I just add money. Yeah. Right? So this is just a different view. And and ride out those uh, market ups and downs. Yeah, and we, and term, we yeah. tend to lower the volatility quite a bit. Mm. And that's, that's important for people's heart, right? Mm. Because uh, if you don't lose too much, you don't have to earn it all back. I've, uh, we, we have accounts with all our competitors and in the same period that this algorithm did, did a positive, we, we saw uh, some of our competitors going down 47%, which is horrible for people who were invested. Mm. So Peter, is your background in mathematics? In the end, I'm a statistician. So okay, yeah. is that mathematics? Well, for a lot of people <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started, um, I'm an old man, right? So I mm-hmm. started studying in 91 after I came out of the army. And I started studying rocket science or aerospace, they call it them. The technology is, is, is a lot about mathematics and models and very interesting. Mm. But... I missed really the human side. So then I started to do a second study next to it, doing sociology. And, <laughs> well, that's uh, so opposite. <laughs> that, that's that's yeah. like the polar op- opposite. I just fell in love with it. And then but, but, but because I'm really like a math guy, I, I decided to do statistics. Mm. Statistics is now basically the only thing I'm doing. So how, how does the maths work in this? Sorry, I, don't, I know that you're, you, you can't give really specifics about it, but there's a lot of people who say, well, you can't second guess the markets, you can't predict the markets. But are there, is it kind of like a pattern identification thing that no. you're doing? Or? So basically, you have to go back to the types of statistics there are. Mm. Um, so I grew up as a, what they call a frequentist statistician, right? So that's... How frequent does something happen? Mm. Then um, in the last 20 years, Bayesian st- statistics uh, became, became more popular. And Bayesian statistics basically looks at the probability of something happening and then also how influential the event is that could ha- happen. So basically, well, so, so sometimes you hear people talking about fat tails. Mm. Yeah? Yep. So if a uh, fat tail is there, then there's a, high f- there's, a, there's a relatively high probability that an extraordinary event can happen. Mm. But it depends on how big the result is. So in real life, a nuclear war, the probability of that happening is really, really, really tiny. Mm. But the effects are devastating, right? So it's still important that you still consider that scenario Mm. because the effect is so big. So if you have tail events in your strategy that could wipe you out completely, you still have to consider it. Mm. While a frequentist would say, Oh, the chances are nil, so I just ignore it. And that's where, uh, you, 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 I don't know if you remember, 2018 there was a fund in the US that blew up on a strategy on gas and options. Mm. And suddenly the gas moved in a very different direction for whatever reason, and the whole fund blew up immediately. So what they did is they ignored their tail risk. Mm. Um, while if you are a Bayesian statistician, you would always cover your tail. So that's almost like an individual investor needs to think about their tail risk as well, don't they? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think a lot of investors who uh, were in crypto have found a tail risk very in their face, right? So Mm. the tail risk of uh, the model of Luna not working was actually 
very much there. Mm. But most people say, ah, the, those guys are so smart. They, Is that the brokerage that you're referring to, Luna? No, Luna was the uh, the coin that imploded. Oh, okay, yeah. And, uh, and that, that set off basically a whole chain reaction of events. Mm. And But those chain reaction, that's also like a tail risk, right? So mm. we could all say the brokerages, oh, they were safe. Yeah, but there was a tail risk that something they invested heavily in was going to implode. And... They didn't really see that, but we have in our space we have uh, usually better regulation mm. around it, right? So uh, because an hedge is a is a regulated uh, entity, we um, we are not allowed to take those risks, and we won't take them. We have to describe any risk in our PDS, mm. and uh, we have of course a lot of procedures to to take away all the tail risk. And of course, you should. You know, consult a licensed financial planner if you before investing anything. <laughs> oh no, absolutely, and mm. and uh, and and often often people say that out of uh, mm. like you know you should talk to a financial advisor, but in real life your your life will change all the time, right? So your strategy should also be adjusted to it. And mm. if you do not want to put the effort in to learn about it, which most people have better things to do, raising their kids and and yeah. doing doing you've got to be stuff. passionate about it too. Yeah, you have to, to, to work yeah, like better like yeah. like you. I mean you just love to talk about this stuff and I do as well. But a lot of my friends say, Oh yeah, yeah, that's sure. Mm. Yeah, I'll just invest. <laughs> <laughs> At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the breakroom products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make stocking your team's break room easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Well, the reason why I asked you back, I mean, first of all, I know that you're going to be bringing a couple of products out to market, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I guess just from my own personal experience, and again, please don't do anything based on what I'm saying here. Don't listen to me for financial advice. However, I put a little bit of money into Unhedged earlier in this year when you first launched. And I was, I was very surprised at about how little it went down compared to how much the US market went down. And now we're at a point where the U.S. market has been recovering, and it's been going down a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> it hasn't yeah. So, recovered. So, yeah, so, yeah. so what are uh, the algorithms doing? Well, the algorithms are looking at probabilities, and the probability that this is a bear market bounce, or a bear market rally, or a dead cat bounce, or how, how you call it. I'll is, just uh, I'll just date stamp this because this might be a couple of weeks before it comes out. So we're recording on August the the seventeenth. Yeah, so things so, may have changed, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you look at the bottom of a curve, it's um, hard to detect, right? So because the curve always has like bounces in it, and you don't know how the bounce, how high the bounce can go. Now, if you look at the current market situation in the US, we're now around 4,200 in the S&P. Mm hmm which is kind of a critical level. And it's a critical level, not because of any technical analysis, but if you look at the volume traded around that level, it's a it's a very substantial traded level. So if you cross substantial traded levels in the, in the markets, then there tend to be a large group of people that are either in profit or in loss. So people will decide either I'll jump out because now I'm again neutral, or I will short it, or I will double down. Mm. Right. So that's basically the three, the, the, the three things you can do. And there's those opposing forces yeah. acting against each exactly, other. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and why are bear markets rally so vicious? Is because of shorting in general, right? So people go short. That means that they sell a share they don't have. Yeah, so you borrow a share from somebody else and then you sell it. And if you uh, are short, then you profit from when the market goes down. Now, when the market reverses, 
then you start to lose money. As it goes up again. As it goes up again. You can lose viciously as well. Yeah, and then all these people who were short, they have to buy. They have to buy back their assets to give Mm. it back to you, uh, to give it back to the guy who they borrowed it from. And so it means that these rallies are becoming often very vicious, very, very steep up, until all the shorters are again neutral. And then it's the question of whether the bulls take over and run further or whether it neutralizes. We're right in that phase. Uh, so and by the time you publish, we probably know what happened. Mm. But uh, the algorithms indeed are still defensive and they're defensive because the probability that this is a bear market rally is still substantially high. Mm. And there's a few things that are really standing out and I know my all my models, so I... We'll pick out a few small n- nuggets. Some points, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, um, one of the things is that uh, you have a ratio, it's called the copper-gold ratio. And the copper-gold ratio has a very, very strong correlation with the 10-year yield. And if you graph it over the past 30 years, you say, that's odd. That's so correlated, that's amazing. So what you see now is that the 10-year yield is... Which is a bond price. It's a bond price of, of the 10-year bonds that the U.S. Treasury, uh, Treasury yeah. sells. That, that bond yield is wavering and it's basically going down again, which is remarkable because we are in a highly inflationary environment. This highly inflationary environment usually needs bond yields to go up to stop inflation from running wild. But now the market says they won't raise that high. They won't raise beyond 3 4%. We don't know what, if that will be true, but that's what the market now says. Which basically means that if you look then at the copper gold ratio, it says actually there will be a recession. If there would be a recession, the market would go down. But if first the rates go down, then the markets will go up. So these are basically very contradictory signals. The moment a AI or machine learning model finds contradictory signals, it usually does one of two things. It does nothing (laughs) or it does something defensive. And our models are programmed very defensively. Uh, because uh, this is old adage, if you lose 50% of your money, you have to double it again to become neutral. If you lose only 10% of your money, you only have to make 11% up mm. to become neutral. So our models are programmed to be very defensive and not to lose too much when the market go- goes down and try to profit from the way up. Mm. But it always means that we miss, in general, the first tick up. So does that answer the question? It's a little bit uh, of a, of a uh, long-winded uh, No, it's, it's a really interesting insight to me, you know, to, to see how markets work because obviously in these figures and these ratios is a lot of market psychology is wrapped up in it and the mentality behind the people in the industry that are affecting the movement of the money in and out of the markets. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then uh, we should, I think, always talk about inflation lately. Uh, Milton Friedman, he uh, won several big prizes and a very famous economist. He said the primary cause of inflation is always the creation of money. Mm. And there has been so much money created. so Around the world. In, around in, the world. Insane yeah. amounts of money. Yeah. And that means that People who say now, ah, the inflation is transitory. They don't really understand what the base mechanisms of inflation are. Mm -hmm. And you can often see when inflation becomes more sticky, and that's when inflation goes in wages, because then it becomes a spiral. Mm -hmm. So if people get paid more, companies have higher costs, they have to charge those costs, so they will raise the prices. Mm -hmm. And raising prices makes life more expensive. And then, which is for me something always fascinating, is all all these movements of these currencies, right? So why do they move? And mm. which is extremely fascinating. Lots of people make lots of models about it, and mm. nobody knows exactly what's going to happen because it it has to do with so many fa- factors. And that's and that's frankly, Phil, why. 
I think, and my team thinks, and a lot of our clients think that algorithmic investing is a lot more accurate way of investing than static rebalancing. Mm. Is that the world is not a linear place. This is not, a, you can't draw a line from A to B. All the things in the world are non-linear models. And if you add non-linear models to each other, then the effect becomes so hard to see. Is this the old butterfly in the Amazon analogy? Yeah, yeah, that's... that's Setting well, off a hurricane and... Well, that's, that's more about the, the, chaos. Eff- the, the yeah. effect, the effect yeah. of, of things that you cannot see. But our world of economy exists out of thousands, millions of processes which are all non-linear. Mm, mm. So, yes, often we can find a pro- pro- probability of something ha- happening, but that doesn't mean that it will happen. Uh, yep. There's a probability. Mm. Well, let's have a chat with about the, the new products that oh, um, yeah. you're here it's to announce today. Very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. So we asked our clients, so what would make you invest more? And they answered three things. The market has to go up, uh, crypto, and ESG or or responsible investing. Mm. And then we dug a little bit deeper and then we lo- also looked at why do people invest? As basically most people invest for growth. Yeah? So they want to build their nest egg for whatever goal. And then you have a group of people who are older who say, well, I want to park some money and then get every month month money out. So income, those, income generating. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in income or, or in the end, eat part of your capital, but in a very responsible way. Mm. So the first thing we're going to launch is what we call a climate and society positive investment strategy. We did a lot of an analysis on all the goals of the Paris 2015 agreements and we looked at how can we invest in companies that as a whole will either have limited or a positive influence on the climate so they basically reduce their hothouse gases then we looked at okay there's not only the companies for example apple it's not only what apple does but also what apple forces their supply chain to do So what we did is made a massive model of all the companies in the US. And we made what they call a graph and we looked at all the supply chain. Mm. And then we look at how the supply chain and the companies on top are improving. Because we believe, and I think more and more scientists are, are in the same camp, this is not about an absolute number. This is not only about this house should only have this much Hmm. exhaust or this company should only do x it's about improvement because every improvement is a conscious effort you cannot improve without actually trying so if we see that the supply chain is improving either the management themselves do it or they get forced by their clients so that's the hypothesis and what we have seen is that If you look at the long term, and this is really predictive, we look at whether the cost in the end will increase because of climate costs, because of taxation, because of other elements or customers leaving them, or whether their revenue can be enhanced by being more climate friendly and society friendly. And so that's what we did. And we found a model that actually does as good as or better than the market at times. And we expect that this will only grow. We, we still have to go through all the, re- the regulatory hoops because uh, ASIC has made a lot of guidance around greenwashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's one so, of the major uh, yeah. targets at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and good for them, right? Because greenwashing is horrible. If you look at most what they call ESG ETFs or Responsible Investing ETFs, they're full of... Companies like Google, Apple, for, for example, NVIDIA. NVIDIA was uh, a fabulous or, or someone who did not produce any physical pro- pro- product, right? For, for a while. So they were called fabulous. Mm-hmm. So they were an ESG com- company because they didn't have a physical pro- 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 product. Now they're making board themselves 
and now they went down in the rankings. Mm-hmm. Well, that's silly, right? The fact that a company doesn't make a physical product doesn't mean, mean it, it's a climate positive company. Yeah, yeah, there's that's a, right. there's yeah. a lot of more variables that you have to take into account. And if you, I mean, for people who like climate positive investing, they really should look at the ETFs they invest in and what's in it. Mm. If you look what, what's in it, you think, but that has nothing to do with the climate. Mm. And that's the, the fallacy we want to we wanna really step out of. We say, what if we just look at companies consciously improving? It's the progress and the process we think we should promote rather than the end goal. Because the end goal, even if we get at the Paris Agreements we will have another goal behind that, right? Mm. So this is just a a process and we should really help companies to uh, say, okay, we invest in you because we believe that you do this consciously and this is a conscious effort. And then the the income fund? The income fund is, uh, is, I mean, there's plenty of income funds for, uh, let's say, very rich people, right? So they Mm -hmm. they, they put a a part of their, their, their money into annuities and then, uh, they get every month a, a distribution. For people who have funds that they want to do that with, but still want the fund to be available, it's really hard to do that. And so what we have done is created a model that basically looks at uh, companies that have very good and sustainable dividends mm-hmm. and high yield bonds. Yeah? So companies often have uh, bonds that, uh, although they have enough cash to, to do the project themselves, they just want to borrow the money to do it. And those bonds are, are paying good coupons and good, good interest, and they're pretty safe. So although the, the model will go up and down a little bit uh, with the market and what they call multiple expansion and contraction, in the end, the goal is to create a steady income of, like, say, 3 4 5% a year mm-hmm. and then uh, letting people get that money every month. Mm. So uh, we are launching next month Auto Invest. So that's basically uh, after your salary get paid, so you, you invest uh, automatically, which is uh, the best way to, to get rich in the end is just to invest every month, mm-hmm. same time. Yep. Every week, same time. We're also going to reverse that. We have an auto withdrawal. Mm-hmm. And that means that people can say, well, I put $100,000 in here and I want to get every month $1,000 from it. Uh, and then they eat slowly a little bit in their capital, but they know they get every month. So it becomes like an annuity, really. Yeah, but then yeah. when you need your capital to buy a new car or when you buy a new house, you still can get it. So it's flexible, completely flexible. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's totally yeah. flexible. Well, if you have an annuity, you usually have to lock, lock it down for many, yep. many years. Mm-hmm. Or even they calculate it such that the whole principle will be gone by the time you die and they take a risk on that, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a different type of model. So we we really believe that uh, it's your money. You should be able to access it any day, any time you want. When you're investing in unhedged, can you weight your portfolio into these different kinds yes. of uh, yes. models that are being yes. offered? Yeah. Uh, most people take equal weight. And equal weight means that uh, you just take an equal part of the algorithms. Mm. And that means that in backtesting, that showed the least volatile outcome. Mm. Yeah? But with the launch of the new models, they are more theme-based, right? So the climate and society positive model, it's more about whether you think that's more important than to have a very diversified portfolio. Mm. So it becomes opt-in, does it? Yeah. yeah. And and so you can put 100% in climate positive. You also can put 100% in yield if that's what you want. But you also can create a portfolio all over, right? Mm. And say, listen, I want the machine to calculate the best weighting across all those. And we expected actually more people to make their own weighting Mm-hmm. But we see most people say, let the machine do it for me. Yep. And and that's, I mean, as you have seen, that gives a, a result that is less volatile. And for most people, that's, that's what it needs to do. Fantastic. So if people want to find out more about Unhedged? Go to unhedged.com.eu.
And there's an app as well, isn't and there? And there's an app, right? So you can uh, look in the, in the app stores under Unhedged. Don't type Unhinged. <laughs> because as a Dutchman, people say, sorry, you said Unhinged? No, Unhedged. <laughs> unhedged. <laughs> unhedged. We're launching a uh, refer your friend model in the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can earn $10 if you refer your friends. And... Um, Yeah, just try it out. What's the minimum investment? Minimum investment is $100. It's mm-hmm. really cheap. Well, cheap is really low. Uh, what what we've seen, though, is that um, a lot of people, they try with a little amount of money, so like two, three hundred dollars. And then after a month, they just add a thousand or a few mm-hmm. thousand. So it's remarkable that we see a lot of people trying it. And then when they see that it indeed does what it should should do, they put more money in. Fantastic. Peter Backer, thank you very much for joining me again today. Uh Very welcome. If you found this podcast helpful, please tell a friend, especially if it's someone who needs to start thinking about investing for their future. You'll be helping them and helping me to keep this show on the road. Shares for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not shares for beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. And thank you for listening to my podcast. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make furnishing an office space easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.